Hello viewers, welcome to CAE for you. In this video, we will see supersonic compressible flow over a bullet using open foam. Our interest is to calculate the aerodynamic drag of a projectile traveling at supersonic speed. In this case, the geometry will be 7.62 mm bullet. The simulation will be carried out in supersonic flow regime. The requirement is to understand the flow field around the projectile and compare the test result with the CFD results. We also feel that this work can demonstrate open source software capability for performing supersonic flow simulations. The geometry used in this simulation is shown here. Though it is named 7.6 mm bullet, the actual caliber which is nothing but is the maximum dia of the bullet corresponds to 7.82 millimeters and as the dimensions are specified in calibers for ease of modeling all dimensions are converted into millimeters and when the model was generated there were some minor differences were observed the maximum difference was about 1.2 percent as stated earlier the objective is to find the drag coefficient and verify the results with the openly available literature. For the purpose of verification, we have chosen two design points, one corresponding to Mac 1.1 and other corresponding to Mac 2.2. The choice was made such that the complete supersonic regime has been covered some simplifications are required so that we would be able to run this simulation with the available hardware. The computation domain for this analysis is 2D axis symmetric which means it would be possible only to do a zero angle of attack simulation which would correspond to a flat trajectory and further we haven't considered the gravity effect. Most of the bullets are spin stabilized which means a spin motion is induced when the bullet gets fired. However, in this analysis the spin effect is not included for the simulation. The simulation will not allow side wind effects because that will require a full model simulation. The turbulence effects are neglected and it is considered that the flow is laminar and inviscid. This simulation is more suitable for shock capturing and the so called no ya CD that is the drag coefficient are of interest. Let us look into the workflow. The CAD modeling is done using FreeCAD. Meshing is done using Salome. Open foam has been used as a solver to solve the CFD part. The post processing was done using Paraview and LibreCalc. In order to get the graph coordinates from the published images, Engage digitizer has been used for graph digitization. Let's look into the flow domain. The 4 degree sector model is used for this simulation. It consists of the inlet patch, the outlet patch and a far field zone. The bullet surface is considered as wall. In order to create structured mesh, partitions are made which are indicated by the blue lines. The flow domain and the partitioning surfaces were exported as step file for meshing. For better computational efficiency, structure grids are preferred. Due to the wedge shape near the axis of symmetry, it is not possible to create pure X element. However, it is possible to create hex and prism elements which are mapped and structured. The total cell count is about 20,000. This is slightly on the coarser side. Mesh refinement near the walls were controlled using geometric progression which allowed the necessary refinement near the walls and at the same time the cell counts does not become too large 
to fit our hardware. All the patches necessary for boundary conditions are created within Salome. Then the mesh generated has been exported in UNV format. The ideas UNV to foam utility was used to convert the UNV mesh file to the open foam native mesh. Then check mesh was used to check if the quality are intact. Let's look into the solver details and the working condition. Since steady state solvers were not performing well in this flow regime, row central foam, a transient solver has been chosen, which is a density based solver. As stated previously, laminar conditions are used for this simulation and the maximum CFL was controlled to 0.5. Its coefficients are post processed so that those values can be readily extracted for comparison with the test result. Flow velocity is calculated using the pre-stream Mach number. The pressure and temperatures were applied as per the atmospheric conditions. The wall was modeled as lip boundary and the sector are treated as wedges. Let us first the flow field.
Let's now compare the flow field with the available shadow graph. The results obtained from CFD has been overlapped with the shadow graph. Since the quality was limited, we made as best attempt as possible in order to ensure that the bullet surface is properly aligned with the one that is available in the shadow graph and what we could see is there is a reasonable agreement between the CFD results and the observed shadow graph. As you can see the shock lines are very well aligned indicating that the CFD software is capable of capturing the shock waves with reasonable agreement. This is for Mac 1.1 let us look into the results of Mac 2.2. As we can see, the results are still reasonably agreeing, which means that the CFD simulation that has been performed can be qualitatively compared with the test results. Two other observations are, since this is a laminar analysis, we would not be able to capture the wake that is generated downstream flow of the bullet. Wake regions are also of interest then full 3D model will be warranted with scale resolving turbulence models which are computationally very expensive. Let's look into the CD time plot which has been extracted from the post processing utility of OpenFOAM. As we could see that the drag coefficient seems to be well stabilized and we are also able to see a clear maximum. So we have selected the maximum CD value for Mach 1.1 case. However, additional iterations are required to visualize the periodic steadiness of the result. It is worth noting that the inlet patch has to be slightly modified in comparison to Mac 2.2 in order to get a stable result. Let's look into Mac 2.2 CD time history. As we could see that the solution is still converging. So further iterations would be required. However, we could see that a periodic steadiness are getting achieved. So, in this case, we have taken the average CD value. Since the drag coefficient represents the resistance offered to the body, maximum CD value of the converged solution could be more meaningful. Though, the industry practice is to calculate the time average for the desired length of time of the converged solution. Let us plot the results obtained from CFD and compare it with the data that has been obtained from the literature. As we could see, there is a reasonably close match of the data of the result that has been obtained using CFD and with the experimental result. Of course, the reference area used here corresponds to the maximum diameter of the bullet. For the sake of completeness, we checked what would be the mesh requirement for doing a turbulence simulation. For scale resolving models, the computational size could be 360 million cells or more. Wall modeling can reduce the number of cells but still would be very large to fit our hardware. Hope you liked the video. The files are available at a nominal price and the details are available in the description. See you in next video.